we're going to do exercise 311. And 311 covers learning objective number three. That's a little detailed, which is why I chose it. It sort of gives us a nice round picture of what everything looks like. So let's see what we have. Contribution format versus traditional income statement. Home Entertainment is a small family-owned business that purchases LCD televisions from a reputable manufacturer and sells them at the retail level. The televisions sell on average for $1,500 each. The average cost of a television from the manufacturer is $900. Home Entertainment has always kept careful accounting records and the costs that it incurs in a typical month are as follows. And we have some costs here. And what's important to notice is that um, the costs are selling and administrative. So under selling, you'll see something that says advertising. It says $950 per month. Then it's delivery of televisions. It's $40 per television set. So we can see that we have a mix of fixed costs per month and, and some that are variable costs per set. And then we have some that look like this. Sales salaries and commissions, $2,900 per month plus 4% of sales. So now we have a mixed cost. We have a fixed component, $2,900, and we have a variable component. So we can see how in doing the contribution format income statement, we're going to have to make sure that we're very clear on what's fixed and what's variable, right? So let's see what's asked of us. During April, the company sold and delivered 150 units. Number one, prepare an income statement for April using the traditional format with costs organized by function. So that should be fairly simple for us to do, right? So we need just an income statement, and this is the traditional format income statement. This is for April. And uh, we'll just put in brackets here 150 units so that we know what we've sold for the month. Well, what's the first thing of any income statement? Think about the first word of income statement. What is that? Income, sales. What came in? Sales. So sales, we sell them for $1,500 a piece. 1,500 times 150, we'll get $225,000 in what's called top line revenue. If you ever hear the expression top line revenue, that's what that means, the big sales number. This is traditional, so what's next is cost of goods sold. And we know that they're $900 a piece. We have to construct this. We're making this up as we go. Sales, less cost of goods sold from the data that's given to us. So we have to look at the question and say, well, we know the cost of goods sold are 900. We sold 150. So we experience $135,000 in costs. That gives us $90,000. And it's important to know the name of this. This is called the gross margin. You should be familiar with these names. So if somebody asks you what gross margin did you achieve, you know what, what line item gross margin is. Now, once we've got that, we subtract what is called our S, G, and A, selling general and administrative expense. So let's start with selling expense. And we'll itemize each one so that we know exactly what we're doing because some are fixed, some are variable. Some we can just take, some we have to calculate. So let's start with our selling costs, advertising. We're told it's just 950 per month, so we'll just write 950. Next one is delivery. We'll just write all in short form here. You know what I'm writing is delivery. And it's variable. It's $40 per unit, $40 per, uh, per, per television set. Well, if we delivered 150 and it's $40 per, we have $6,000 in delivery expense. Next, we have sales salaries. All right, we'll just put salaries and commissions. And we're told that our salaries and commissions are $2,900 per month plus 4% of sales. So here's our sales up here. We have to figure out what 4% of these sales are. And if you do the math on that one, we'll just put the 4% down here. We come up with $9,000. Next, we have utilities. We can see that that is constant per month, utilities. And we're told that that is $400 per month. And finally, when with depreciation. And we're told that that's a constant $3,000 per month. So there we go. There's our selling expense. And that'll come to $22,250. Then we're going to take off our admin expenses. Let's see what admin we have. We have four admin expenses. We have executive salaries. 
and we're told that they are 8,000 per month, so that's just a standard fixed cost. We just have to record it, right? Depreciation of office equipment, and we're told that that is $500 per month. <clears throat> Next, we have clerical, and we see that we have a mixed cost here. We have $1,500 per month, so we'll record the $1,500, plus $40 per television sold, plus $40 per unit, and if we sold 150 units and it's $40 per unit, uh, that's the same as delivery, $40 per unit, we'll get to $6,000. Let's make that six clear. And finally, we have insurance, which is $400 per month, and that will total to $16,400. So we take our gross margin, less our selling, less our administrative expense, we will end with $51,350 and that is our operating profit. So there is a traditional format income statement by function. When we say function, we mean the cost of goods sold is a function of selling. Selling expense, that's a functional expense. The expense of selling, the expense of admin. So we're, we're classifying this by functional expense. Now we're going to classify it behaviorally. And number two says, redo number one above, this time using the contribution format with costs organized by behavior. Show costs and revenues on both a total and a per unit basis down through the contribution margin. Down through the contribution margin. So just down through the contribution margin, notice what it's asking us here. On a per unit basis down through the contribution margin, which means once we hit contribution margin, we can stop the per unit. So we don't necessarily need it on a fixed cost basis, but we're going to do it on a fixed cost basis anyways to make a point. So number two, we're going to have our total, and we're going to do our per unit. So let's start at the top. What's the first number that we get to? It's always sales. Well, we've already calculated sales at $225,000, right? And what's our sales per unit? We're told it's $1,500. $1,500 per unit. Less, now we don't go into cost of goods sold, we do it by behavior. So less our variable costs. What's our first variable cost that we get to? Well, it's purchases, right? So our purchases are $135,000. And on a per unit basis, that is $900. What's our next variable cost we get to? Now we have to go through all our expenses one by one and ask the question, right? Under selling, we have advertising at $950 per month. Variable or fixed? Well, it doesn't vary. It's $950 per month. That's fixed. Delivery of televisions, $40 per television. Well, that's variable. It varies per television. So we can put delivery. And we've already figured out delivery down here for $6,000, so we'll put $6,000 here. The next one we get to is sales, salaries, and commissions, $2,900 per month, plus 4% of sales. Well, the $2,900 is fixed. Only the 4% is variable, so that's all we're going to include here. We're just going to include the, the commission and not the salaries. And the commission we've seen was $9,000. The next one we get to is utilities, is $400 per month. We don't bother with that. Depreciation of sales facilities, $3,000 per month. We can ignore that. Going into administrative, our executive salaries are $8,000 per month. That's fixed. Depreciation of office equipment is $500 per month. That's fixed. Clerical is $1,500 per month plus $40 per television. So the fixed component will save, but the variable component we will deal with now. So let's put clerical in clerical and it is six thousand dollars now while you're doing these I just rank them in order like this normally what you would do is you would have a subheading here called selling and you'd have a subheading up here called admin so that you can keep it straight where it is but I just put them all in one order because that the point we're trying to make is the behavior and not so much itemizing it right so if we add this up, we get $156,000 over here, which will give us a contribution margin of $69,000. That's our contribution margin. So on a per unit basis, our delivery, we're told, was $40 per unit. 
our commissions, since it's 4% of sales, we got to figure this out. If sales are 1500, 4% is 60 bucks. We pay a commission of 60 bucks per television set. And we're told that clerical is $40 per unit. That gives us 1040 or $460. Uh, that's our contribution margin per unit. This is our total contribution margin, which is $69,000. So now we've done our variable costs. Let us subtract our fixed costs. And of course, the first category we get to is selling. What fixed costs do we have in selling? We have advertising, ADV, which is $950. We have we don't do delivery we do sales salaries we don't do commissions now we're just doing the sales salaries that's 2900 then we have utilities which are fixed which are 400 and finally our depreciation in that category is 3000 then we'll go to the admin category and we have four in the admin category we have salaries which are fixed at 8000 we have depreciation, which is fixed at 500. We have clerical, which is mixed, but we've already done the variable part of clerical up top under variable costs. So here we're just going to record the fixed component, which is 1500. And finally, insurance is 400. We add up all of our fixed costs, we get to 17,650. If we subtract the two, we get to 51,350. We should get the same number as over here. We do. We can feel confident that we did this right now. Notice our, on our per unit basis, this is 900 for every single unit, 40 for every unit, 60 and 40. If we're going to do it on a fixed cost basis, we don't have to, but if we were going to do it, this would be 633. This would be 1993. 267 20 dollars 5333 333 10 dollars and finally 267 would give us 11767 uh, that would give us 342 23 if you multiply that by 1500 we'll get to 51350 now here's the thing it doesn't make sense. The reason we stop up here at the contribution margin, the reason we stop there is because this is meaningless. Now, I, when I say it's meaningless, I don't mean it's meaningless for us to, to look at what is the, the amount of variable costs versus fixed costs in every television set. That's not meaningless. But what is meaningless is this. We sold um, 150 units. If we sold 149 units instead, these would all change. Even though these would stay constant, this would stay constant, these would change. These would change. They would change with every unit volume. So that we can't say that we have advertising expense of $6.33 per television. We only have advertising expense of $6.33 per television if we sell 150 television sets. If we sell 151, it's lower. If we sell 149, it's higher. So it's meaningless to talk about fixed cost per unit. It's better to talk about total fixed costs. Much like variable costs, if we sell one more or one less, all these change. But these stay constant. So when we talk about variable costs, it makes a lot more sense to talk about variable cost per unit as opposed to total variable costs. So our total variable costs are 156. But if we sold one more television, this would change. If we sold one less television, this would change. But our variable cost per unit is 1,040. Regardless if we sell more or less, the next unit we sell, 1,040. If we sold one unit less, 1,040. So we want to deal with constants. So variable cost per unit is a nice bit of information for decision making. Total fixed costs are a nice uh, um, number, quantitative number for decision making. But fixed costs per unit, they don't help us make decisions. Total variable costs, they don't help us make decisions. You get that? Okay, let's look at what number three is asking us. Refer to the income statement you prepared in number two above, which is this one here. Why might it be misleading to show the fixed cost on a per unit basis? Oh, well, look at that. 
I've already done it. Maybe I knew that that was the question, right? There is 311. You should be able to, to do a, an income statement. If I give you an income statement in the traditional format over here, you should be able to convert it to a contribution format if I tell you uh, how each of these costs behave. Thank you.